This is a practice for every day. We'll be doing some standing poses and uh, supan poses, a few back bends, and especially be focusing on an area that gets very tight for some of us that sit quite a bit during the day. These few poses will give you a lot more freedom in your physical body to support your daily activities. We'll begin in all fours position. If you've got blocks, grab them for the practice. In all fours position, reach your right leg out and just tuck your toes under and draw the pelvis back so that you get a nice elongation of the calf muscle. Now move forward somewhat. Draw your right knee in toward your chest on the exhale. Inhale, extend out. Draw in, extend out on the in-breath, exhale, draw in, chin toward knee, inhale, reach up, release your right leg down, extend your left leg back, tuck your toes under, just reach back, lean back a little bit more so that you get a nice elongation, you can feel the stretch of the calf muscle. Keep pressing forward with the hands, but reaching back from the pelvis to the heel. On the next inhale breath, lift up your leg. Draw your knee in toward your heart. Expand out. Hug in. Reach out. Release your foot down. Reach your right leg back. Draw your right knee in. Draw your left arm in. Reach out, expand. So you get a little core strengthening. Draw in to expand out. Draw in to expand out. Draw in, expand out. Release your right knee down, your left hand. Draw the left knee in, the right elbow in. Reach out, hug in, expand out. Draw in, expand out. Draw in, expand out. Release your hand, release your foot. Lift your right leg up again. And rather than lift your right hip high or drop it down low, try to keep your hip parallel. And you may want to just check that with your hand to see that the hips are roughly parallel. Now externally rotate your leg without lifting the hip. Now internally rotate. So you'll feel the foot move inward toward the midline of the mat. Outward, external rotation, inward, outward, and inward. Release your right knee down with the left leg extended and in the air. Spread your toes. Draw slightly forward. Just check to see that the hips are roughly parallel. And externally rotate the leg, but not lifting the hip. Internally rotate. Externally rotate. Internally rotate. One more. External rotation. Internal rotation. Come to Downward Facing Dog. In Downward Facing Dog, just pedal the legs to Bring a little balance to the action of the pose. To bring a little awareness to the back sides of the leg. Come to a place of stillness. Walk your feet up to your hands. Place your hands to your low back and rise up. We'll do that same external rotation with hands on the blocks. If you don't have the blocks, you can just take your hands to the floor. 
So take your hands pretty far apart with your left leg centered. Bend your left knee just slightly and lift your right leg up, similar to what we just did in all fours position. And just check it out. Maybe your hips are roughly aligned so that, again, we're not lifting the hip high and taking it down low. Instead, it's a turn of the leg so that we can really engage the external muscles of the hip. So as you externally rotate the foot, then internally rotate the whole leg without lifting the pelvic, without lifting the pelvis high, you're externally rotating, internally rotating. Again, you can bend the standing leg so that you don't feel a lot, a lot of tugging in the back side of the leg. And release your right foot down, center the right foot. Take your left leg in the air. With the leg lifted, with the standing leg slightly bent, externally rotate, internally rotate, externally rotate, internally rotate, externally rotate, internally rotate. Release your foot down. Take your hands right at your hips and rise up. A lot of times when we come in forward bends, it's almost like a swan dive that you see, like an exaggerated movement of the pelvis way back. As you inhale, just notice if you're taking the pelvis way back. Let's see if we can avoid that slightly by getting lighter on the heels. It's a slightly different movement. So as you inhale and reach your arms up, see if it's almost like you're trying to work your toes a little bit more, lightness on the heels. Exhale, take your hands down without swinging your pelvis back. From here, reach your right leg up in the air, bend your left knee slightly, and now externally rotate the right foot as you land the right foot down. Inhale, rise up, reach your arms up to come to Virabhadrasana number one. Take your hands wide apart with the back heel rooted. Just drop yourself a little bit deeper in the pose. We did that external rotation so that we're trying to keep the pelvic points roughly parallel in this pose. If you feel like you need to lift up the right heel to do that, by all means do that. Release your hands down to the blocks. Step your back foot forward. Place your right foot centered. Lift your left leg in the air. Bend the right knee slightly. Look back at your left foot. Turn, externally rotate it, so that when you land the left foot, it's roughly aligned for a nice rootedness as you lift your arms up in Virabhadrasana 1. And once again, if the left hip feels like it's rotated too much, lift your left heel up so that you get just a little bit more parallel recognition there in the pelvic points. Reach your arms up, spread your wings even more. Release your hands down. This time, take your hands to the mat. Step back to Downward Facing Dog. In Downward Facing Dog, lift your heels high, bend your knees just slightly to come forward toward a plank position. Now lower yourself all the way to the mat. With your hands right alongside your ribs, Inhale, just pulse up, lift up. Exhale, soften. See if you can lift up even more for a nice hip extension. So you really work at lengthening the psoas muscle. And soften down. One more time. So you hug the elbows in and you lift up even more. Exhale, slowly release down. Come through Downward Facing Dog to take your right foot right between your hands. 
Bring your back knee to the earth. And on the in-breath, just draw your heart forward. Exhale, just shift back slightly. So it's like we're just kind of move repeating that pelvic area here, the hip area. Draw your heart forward, Anjani Asana, and draw back. In this bowing gesture, draw forward and draw back. Step back to downward facing dog. Come through to a plank position. Claw the mat nicely as you bring your shoulders forward, lower down. On the in breath, Lift up, reach your heart forward. Exhale, soften. Inhale, try to puff up that area behind the back there. Try to puff up the kidney area to keep that full so you're not sensing a pinching feeling. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, soften. Come through all fours to downward facing dog and step your left foot forward. Bring your right knee down. Inhale, draw the chest forward. Exhale, shift back. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, shift back. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, shift back. Step back to make your way to downward facing dog. Look forward, step your right foot right between your hands. Bring your back heel to the earth. Take a block just to the inside of your right ankle with the block in its tallest position with your heel to back arch alignment. Draw the top of the thigh back. Now into that space that you created when you move the thigh back, draw down toward the back heel. Rather than scooping the tailbone, draw it down to get length. From there, lift your underside ribs, lift your left arm, reach over, and release your hand down so that we can trade sides. Come to downward facing dog. Step your left foot right between your hands. Park your back heel down. Have your hand to the block. It just gives you more freedom to open up in this pose. Take the top of the right thigh back into that. Create length as you draw down toward the back heel. You're getting length in the spine. Lift up your underside ribs. Reach your right arm up and over. And release your hand down to the mat. Step your back foot forward. Place your hands to your low back and rise up. We'll do one balance pose. In tree pose, I like standing off the mat to feel very rooted into the earth. So with the right knee just slightly bent and slightly turned out in the same way that we've been doing to get this, this outer hip area engaged in our practice. Draw your left heel to the inner thigh. And sometimes we make the mistake of drawing the left heel to the front of the thigh. See if you can get it just a little bit further back as you root the heel to the inner thigh. Use your arms to expand so fully and to create balance in the pose. See if you can draw from the pelvis to your kneecap out to the side so that you get a nice engagement of the standing leg as well as the lifted leg. Reach up and release your hands down. 
release your foot down and come to Tadasana with the feet parallel to begin with. Now turn your left toes out, just try it. See if by turning your left toes out, spreading your left toes for a nice foundation, it's just a slight turn out so that you can engage the hip area. A slight bend to the knee before lifting the right foot up to the inner thigh and draw into the midline of your stance so that you can expand so fully. From the engagement of hugging in, you get this expanse of opening as you reach your arms wide and you have this nice ease to the breath, nice fullness to your pose. As you are ready, you can come out of the pose and release your hands down. We'll come to Virasana next. Virasana is a seated pose. You'll want to use your blocks for most of us. Some of us can sit right between our feet, but I prefer to protect my knees fully by sitting on the block. So the feet are just uh, alongside the pelvis. The sit bones are secure. And if you feel any pain in the knee, maybe that's your sign to get a little bit higher up in the pose. Now take your hands back so that you get, once again, working on this muscle that tends to get really tight for us if our daily activities require us to be seated too much just extend this front side of the body for some of us you can come a little bit lower but if you're feeling it in the knees then you'll need to modify if you can come down slightly the knees might lift if that if they do that's fine but just enjoy a nice fullness to the breath nice fullness to the upper chest so you breathe in and breathe out in the pose when you come out of the pose to support your lifting out with your hands now let's come to lie down Use your block again, this time for elevating your feet. So take your feet right on the block, or on two blocks if you can manage it. Take your feet in this prayer position. Draw your pelvis a little bit closer to the blocks. Settle yourself into this pose. Now, as you just get this nice opening in the pelvic area, keep your feet hugging in toward each other. Just allow a nice ease in your breath. Breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. If this starts to irritate your knees in any way, just put a towel or something to support your thighs. Breathe in deep. And out long. And from here, just step your feet off the blocks and allow the feet to just turn out to externally rotate. Take your attention to your breath. Invite Full in breath through your nose and out breath through your nose. Nice steady evenness of the breath. A 
softness to your facial muscles. Breathe in deep and out long. Breathe in deep and out long. Breathe in deep. Enjoy this pose of relaxation and restoration. Namaste.